there's a couple of examples that I want to bring to your attention today. Um, we know, you know, women are great and all, and they're always pushing for more. Where is this going? When are we going to live together? Are we just going to live apart forever? Are we ever going to get married? Blah, blah, blah. And the vast majority of men um, make this decision uh, uninformed. It's, it's a very important decision. It's a very critical decision, yeah? Sorry, I just want to make sure I got my volume up loud enough. Can you guys hear me okay? Um, most people don't understand the consequence of getting involved with a woman to the degree of living with them brings into their life. Uh, it is misunderstood until they're sitting into a divorce lawyer's office because the knot is being untied and um, she wants some of your shit or your kids or a combination of all those things. And then that's when guys understand what they got into. Nobody tells you up front. It's just, you know, do it. Uh, you know, they tell men and women totally different things. They tell women, you do what's right for you, girl. And they tell men, just do what's right. And when women do what's right for them, girl, it's always involving connecting and being with a strong, virtuous male that has provisioning capability, protection capability, resources, and all that stuff. Um, it's not usually done the other way. Now, it can affect women the other way too. Like women can get the short end of the stick if they end up inviting a broke guy into their life and they're the breadwinner and they have the house and he moves into her house. So family law isn't unique in that it hates fathers. It's just that because of women's solipsistic nature and their hypergamous nature where they're always dating across and up on a socioeconomic scale, they, you know, they find a guy with a, a good lifestyle, a nice car, a nice house, vacation property, boat, the ability to travel, all that kind of stuff. They latch their meat hooks into them. And, uh, you know, they start intermingling lives, which is where stuff gets complicated. So believe it or not, you can love a woman and not live with her. So I'm going to say that again. You can love a woman and not live with her. And by the end of this podcast, this uh, monologue, you're going to understand exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so um, I'll basically sum up the... Um, situation because it's Sutton versus Bell and it's a New Zealand court case and you get, might be thinking well that's New Zealand that's forever away I don't even know where that is I've, I'll, I'll never go there in my lifetime lifetime why does that matter to me well I'm going to use another case in North America as well after this which is actually even worse this just happens to be a recent case that was brought to my attention so thank you to the viewer that sent that to me if you guys come across anything that you feel I need to take a look at, shoot me an email with it and I'll have a look at it. My email is in the uh, about section of the YouTube channels. So this happened recently. Um, and, you know, like any other relationship, it starts off with uh, very good intentions. You know, he's like, you know, she smells nice. Uh, he, she's like, he, you know, he looks nice. He's got some stuff and, you know, uh, the capability to provide and stuff. So let's do things together. I'm going to try to distill this down to layman's terms. I spent a lot of time during my own divorce reading case law. It's one of the things that I encourage guys to do uh, in my course. It's called the uh, Unplugged Alpha's Guide to Divorce. If you guys are untying the knot or contemplating untying the knot, there's a link in the description uh, to my course, um, which will help help prepare you properly. So in Sutton versus Bell, um, the Court of Appeal held that if a couple are in a contemplation of a, de, of a de facto relationship, the court may set aside a disposition of property. So in this case, it was a trust agreement where he put his property in trust prior to the relationship. So a court may set aside a disposition of property such as the transfer of assets to a trust under Section 44 of Property, blah, 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 Act 1976, whatever. <clears throat> so basically what the court is saying is it doesn't matter what you do to protect your property. If we decide something different, than what your intention is with your property to protect it. Even if it's not in your name, even if you put it in a trust, we can put everybody in a time machine and turn back the clock and basically put both of you as a couple in a place where she should be on title for the house, okay? So background, um, Mr. Sutton and Ms. Bell met July 2003. They began, sorry, they began a sexual relationship shortly afterwards. At that time, Mr. Sutton lived with two flatmates in a property that he owned on Point Chevalier, Auckland, name of the street, I guess. So dudes, it doesn't say his age, but he was um, basically you know, bought a house 
and he has two roommates in the house helping him out with the mortgage. Um, the property was Mr. Sutton's former matrimonial home. Okay, so, th so there we go. So he was married prior and he got divorced. Uh, Ex-wife left the house. He obviously bought her out, stayed in the house and said, I'm single, I'll move some roommates in to help pay for shit, probably because the divorce was expensive for him at the time. Then in early 2004, Ms. Bell moved into the property as a flatmate, it says in quotation marks. Ms. Bell had her own bedroom, but slept in Mr. Sutton's bedroom. Now, isn't that shocking that she moves in as a roommate, but shortly after moving in as a roommate, starts porking the guy and basically sleeping in his bed instead of in her own bedroom. This is when things start to change. This is when family's law starts to evolve and mold. When you start behaving like you are a couple in a committed, exclusive relationship to one another, then the state starts to look at that as a marriage. Even if you don't take vows, even if you don't have a ceremony, even if you don't, declare, like, she has her own bedroom, she's a renter, but she's sleeping in your bed and you're acting as a couple, right? I, I mean, you know, they always say, like, don't shit where you eat, right? Prime example, but, you know, let's keep going because guys love to complicate their life and justify why. Uh, at the end of 2004, Mr. Sutton transferred the property into a trust. Now, keep in mind, they met in 2003 when she moved in as a roommate. 2003, sorry, 2004 they met. At the end of 2004, so later on that same year, he transferred the property into a trust with her knowledge and in fact, Ms. Bell suggested that Mr. Sutton place the property into a trust to ensure that it was considered separate property and not a family home. I'm gonna say that shit again, because this is how fucked up this is. This chick told him, encouraged him to put the property that she was in, rented while sleeping in his bed, into a trust so that it would be considered separate property and not a family home, okay? so. He's probably going at this point, well, this chick's cool. She cares about me. Uh, she doesn't want anything to do with my shit. Because that's what women will do, right? You know, before they before they take your shit or they, you know, start doing stuff like this. Excuse me a second. You know, they'll do the standard. I don't need anything from you. I'm self-sufficient. I really, I'm not here for your money. I just love you. Blah, blah, fucking blah. Several years later, guess what happens when they part ways? Now, all of a sudden, she's changed her mind. And you have to remember, guys, women always reserve the right to change their mind at any given time. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say it louder so the people in the back hear it. Women always reserve the right to change their mind at any given time. Are you paying attention? I feel like I need to shout these things sometimes. There's I feel. Anyway, at the end of 2004, I transferred into the property trust. Uh, not a family home. Let's keep going. So the couple then entered into a de facto relationship a month or two after the transfer of the property. So they're not officially a couple at the time that the trust was created. He did this before they became exclusive, before they formed a commitment, before she sat down and said, Mr. Sutton, I dig your vibe. Where do we stand? Where is this going? Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I dig your vibe. Let's do this. Let's become a couple. Let's, let's be official. Let's start going to each other's Christmas parties. Let's start taking vacations together. Uh, you don't need to probably live in the spare bedroom anymore uh, and rent it. You're now my girlfriend or whatever. So they entered into the, into the relationship a month or two after the transfer of the property and the trust. For the purposes of the act, a de facto relationship is between two people who are both over the age of 18 and living together as a couple. So that's the definition under law in that country. Two people living together, both over the age of 18 and as a couple. That is, the, that is now the definition in this country of a de facto relationship. Now, they don't talk about two years, common law or anything like that. They just call it a de facto relationship. So it seems like in New Zealand, if you live with somebody and you're over 18 and you're a couple, you're basically married in the eyes of the state. Let's keep going. The couple continued to live at the property until they separated in 2012. <clears throat> so almost 10 years later, right? Shocking. Another another marriage, essentially, that didn't work out, right? As 50% of them do. And as you guys know, if you've read my book, which if you haven't, please, guys, the podcast is based on the book. The podcast builds on the book one episode at a time. 
As you would have learned in my book, there's a study which I talked about where they followed couples who had been together for an average of about eight and a half years and they were asking them to report their state of affection for one another. And after about eight and a half years or so, less than 13% reported that they were still in love and less than 3% reported that they were in a state of bliss, meaning like they're obsessed with each other. So every guy is just like, yep, yeah, let's do this. Let's, let's live together and invite the government into our lives and, you know, be a couple. And they also had kids. I'll get, you know, get into that in a second. What could possibly go wrong, right? Well, even if you stay together and you don't get divorced, the chances of you actually being in a loving, blissful relationship is exceptionally small. Half the marriages end, the other half that stay together, a very tiny percentage of them are still in love. Let's keep going. Ms. Bell subsequently claimed a half interest in the property on the basis that Mr. Sutton had transferred the property to the trust in order to defeat her entitlements under the act. Keep in mind, before they became a couple, it was documented that she encouraged Mr. Sutton to put his property in a trust for his own benefit and protection. <clears throat> the, the family court ordered that the property be transferred to Ms. Bell and Mr. Sutton as tenants in common. All that really means is you have equal interest in the property. Um... The high court dismissed Mr. Sutton's challenge that the decision, uh, sorry, the high court, dis so he challenged the original decision in a high court. He just took it to the next level, right? Like an appeal court. And Mr. Sutton's challenge to the decision, but it was appealed. So they just basically said, sorry, I don't really care how you feel. This is how it looks, on, looks like to us under law. So we're going to give her half your house. Hey, keep in mind, this guy is prior married, so he probably had to pay out his, his, his first wife for whatever the value of the house was assessed at that time. Then he moved in roommates. Then he did the dumbest thing ever, moved in another chick and got into a relationship with her. And now she's taking half of the house after he's already paid out his ex for half of the house several years earlier. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I got to laugh, you know. Guys love to complicate their life and justify why they do it. I mean, hopefully this, this Mr. Sutton character learned his lesson by now and won't ever make a stupid mistake like this again. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full-length podcast, you can find that over here, that clip's from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment, you'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line, books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.